guys, Eric here checking in uh, for the Hush Life vlog on my birthday. So today is Friday, April Fool's Day, and uh, this is not a joke, it's not April Fool's, but today's my birthday, and holy crap, I turned 30 freaking nine years old. It sounds worse than it feels. I don't feel any different, but 39, goodness, I remember when I was a kid, Asking my mom how old she was, and at the time she was 31, being like, yeah, you know, grown-ups, so old. But uh, I'm out doing what I love. You guys know the program. Um, every spring, especially on my birthday, I'm out picking up elk sheds. You can see I had a little bit of luck. A lot of miles for that one antler, but at least it's a good one. So I can't complain about that. This is a, the way I wanted to spend my birthday was out here looking for antlers and Got what I wish for, a keeper, a keeper side. But I just wanted to take a minute on here, on our own channel, and just thank the entire team at Hush. Casey, BMAC, Logan, and Matt. They are out right now, or at least headed out today, to go to a conservation project that they, uh, that's called Brush for Bucks. Really cool project um, that they've done, I think in partnership with First Light, to go plant the sagebrush uh, baby sagebrush in a winter range that got burnt so super cool project uh, I kind of wish I was there to be honest now that I'm out here but I was being a little selfish I'm trying to be honest and transparent here and I wanted to go out and shed hunt uh, the reason I'm not going to make it is because it's on Saturday and that's going to be my uh, travel day back home so I did I wanted to hop on here guys because whoa those type of things are very very important to hush as a company and a team and those guys have taken the lead to put the conservation project together make it a really fun event for the people that showed up so i want to thank everybody who showed up for the project um, but again thank you guys team um, for holding it down and, and throwing down that that fun project so i'm going to try to scoop up another shed or two uh, motivation is pretty low um, but I did want to just throw out the camera really and just thank those guys for their hard work and their efforts in conservation that's a big pillar of our company conservation giving back and uh, acquiring new hunters and anglers so with that being said guys I'll continue the vlog and I'm sure you'll hear from those guys up there but uh, enjoy the rest of the Hush Life vlog back to the truck Here's the trophy of the day. Today's gem with a big old devil tine. Actually a pretty sweet antler, so super stoked to snag it on my birthday. Nice and brown on that side. This antler would be perfect for dog chews if I decide to cut it up. Might have to keep it for a birthday memory, but it's headed home anyways. I'm back to the truck just kind of waiting on, uh, waiting to hear from Wade. The last I heard, he hadn't found anything. So guys, we just, we're not in the right spot. The last couple days probably made for a little bit of a slow video, but at least you guys get to see, I'm not always out there crushing it. And when you try a new country, which you gotta do if you're looking to expand, you gotta try new spots. It's not always gonna be in your favor, but the only way to find out is to get boots on the ground and go for it which we did today so we got one today and then two little guys that i'm taking home and we'll throw them in the chalk pile hey hey guys we made it home back to uh salt lake and sadly enough today was started out super sunny with clear skies and now it looks like we have a storm blowing in american flag is cruising so we've got a south wind it looks like and uh, it's supposed to be cold and rainy here the next couple days. I'll be home all week. Shed hunting videos are actually scheduled to start tomorrow if you're watching this on Monday which is when we put up um, Hush Life vlog videos. Tomorrow is day one of shed tour guys and it's a, it's a good one. I'm excited to get shed tour started. It's my favorite series of the year and I think you guys are going to enjoy it for those of you who like elk or uh, shed hunting in general. So. Um, I'm gonna unpack all this mess and get everything back together, but uh, whoops One last look at the keeper shed I found on my birthday and by the way tons of birthday wishes across all platforms um, I know it probably hasn't been announced on YouTube, but 
anybody who said uh, happy birthday on TikTok or DMs or Instagram, I just want to say thank you guys. So, yeah, that's the only shed that I want to keep from the weekend. This, this one, for now, is not going to be going into the dog chew pile. But it could eventually if inventory is needed. So I'm going to get all this stuff out, which, by the way, this truck camping stuff... Uh, I could probably get used to this. Um, typically, I like to get in and shed hunt and do these overnighters, but I love those, and I will continue to do those. But it's also so nice just to have a solid truck truck camp set up. I got the Yeti chair, canvas cutter, food, and a bunch of other gear and equipment, and then a Camp Chef stove. So I think I'm getting into the truck camp style. I'm going to do more of those, especially with Shed Crazy as the year goes by. But before we get the vlog cut, for my section anyways, I wanted to shoot my bow in the backyard and just hang out with you guys and uh, share some thoughts. Let's go shoot bows. Oh, good. Or legal. Casey's got one job to put a stick well, I got big old hot dog fingers, bro. I was trying to go this way. It's pretty straight. That's the style, though. You don't want it straight. Okay, <laughs> hey, this is Brandon Tease. He is a biologist for the Fisher game in what region? Uh, Magic Valley region. Magic Valley region. If you guys haven't heard, we are doing a project tomorrow, April 2nd, called Brush for Bucks, where we have purchased 10,000 Wyoming... Big Sage. Big Sage seedlings? Correct. Seedlings, and we're gonna plant them tomorrow. So what we did was we applied for a grant through the state. We got the grant, which gave us enough money to buy 10,000 plants, and then we sold tickets, uh, very exclusive. We only sold 50 tickets um, to you guys to come out and help us do this uh, project tomorrow. Anyway, all the money we raised this year is going to go towards next year's project. I'll inform you more about it later, but we're going to jump on the Can-Am. Brandon's going to go show us some planning locations, and uh, we're going to go from there. So it starts tomorrow, but we show up early just to get everything ordered in order and organized. And uh, yeah, so let's go look at some planning spots. And as we kind of consider that a winter range yep. that year, that's where the si we estimate the 16,000 deer. Yeah, so when we're when we're collaring deer, this is, and we're drive netting deer, like this is. This is the hot, is hot zone. Hot spot. Yep. I'm trying to think if that was 2011 or 2012 fire. I mean, you're not seeing much for sagebrush at all. Right? Yeah. There is some bitter brush. That's kind of a very important shrub for the deer. They're their browsers that's what they're kind of looking for but they're also eating sagebrush too but so this is obviously sage here is that this is brush? actually this is actually rabbit brush rabbit brush Let's see if we can find a bitter there's a bitter piece of brush for my uh, eagle scout project when i was a young lad i went and shook a uh, buck brush is it buck brush or bitter brush and collected the seeds yep and uh donated them to fish and game yep so one pound of clean bitter brush See, this is pretty much with first light where we usually collect bitter brush seeds. Uh -huh. So one pound of bitter brush seeds, about 15,000 seeds. Uh -huh. One pound of sagebrush clean is about a million seeds. Really? Yep. Holy There's a huge crap. difference. So this, the seed actually needs to be buried a little bit. Sagebrush, man, it just pretty much, it, it stays on the surface. So when you have those fires come through, it, it'll, it'll burn that seed and kill it. Oh, interesting. So a lot of these plants are like rodents will go cash the bitter brush seeds. Uh -huh. So if you see like in like the badger fire south of Twin there, up in these in these rocks, and we're starting to see some um, regeneration of bitter brush because that's where all the rodents are cashing in. No kidding. Yeah. I guess there's a purpose to have rodents around then. Uh-huh. For sure. I always wondered what that was. Yeah. Now can you tell us the purpose of mosquitoes? Nope. Bat food. <laughs> Bat food, I like it. Yeah. And how many years, so like say we plant uh, this tomorrow, yep. 2022, when are you going to actually see, like how long does it take to get, you know, say two feet tall? Um, it's all water dependent, um, but I've seen some of the sagebrush that we've planted. If we had some decent moisture, two to three years old, they'll start producing seed. Really? Yep. Sweet. For sure. And what percentage, I remember you told us this at the other one we did with you guys, what, uh, what's the percentage if we put 10 plants in the ground? How many of those do you think you're going to make it? It's all water dependent, but if we had three out of the 10, if we had 30%. That's good. We're calling that good, yep. Um, one of the projects we did with First Light, we planted, you know, a couple thousand. I think I had like 50%, 60% survival. Oh, wow. Be you know, because I was telling you, like north facing slope, yep. a little, holds a little bit moisture, a little longer. It doesn't get hammered by the sun as, as hard in the summer. Yep. So it, it'll, 
it'll do better. Do better. Yep, that's why we're gonna try to focus on north facing slopes. If we can find like little indentations and plant into that. So hopefully it'll, it'll go this summer and then next year there'll be a little bit more snow collected right there yep. and give it a little jump start in So spring. anything that's like a depression or mm -hmm. anything like that will hold some water. Yep, awesome. like even a, even a cow hoof print. Yeah. yeah. Well, when we did it last time, I was putting elk turds into you next to it. Them? Does that work? Sure. Sweet. We'll go with that. I've been known to be a green thumb, so. <laughs> Casey and I are out doing some important work, and we are putting these signs up. We are doing a habitat restoration project with the fishing game here in Idaho. And uh, we're just out running some little errands and putting some signs up, but this is the first look of our brush for Bucks Camp. Logan is on his way. Brian will be here tomorrow. So we're gonna go set camp up and eat some good food. I'm just posting a story. We actually, you guys won't see this until it's af after, obviously, but we sold 50 tickets. Um, we put it on the website a week ago. It's, it's an exclusive event. Um, but we sold 50 tickets and they sold out within an hour and a half, thanks to you guys. But we actually ended up having four remaining tickets left. So I'm doing a quick story. I know it's super last minute, but somebody lives around here and wants to come to the event. Um, I'm just doing a story to let them people know at home there's four tickets remaining. Just informing the people. So I will see you guys back at the jumping jack when we start setting up camp for the evening. Good enough. Good enough for the ladies we go out with? Uh huh. Um, all right. Hi, welcome back. Welcome back to the program. Glad to have you. So, me and Matt have, we've gone out, with, went out with Brandon, the biologist. He shows us where we're going to be planting. We got uh, porta potties delivered, showed him where to put those. We went and put our signage out so people coming tomorrow hopefully won't get lost. Now we're gonna set up camp, set up the jumping jack. And uh, we got a bunch of gift bags that we gotta go through and put Onyx memberships in every one of them and raffle tickets. So got some clerical stuff to go over to do tonight. And uh, Logan should be out here in a couple hours. Brian's coming out in the morning. And then people will probably start rolling in tomorrow I'd assume around eight or nine. And the event really gets kicked off at 10. Well, apparently my best friend in the whole world that's me. Rolls up, playing sticks. Look at that grip, dude. Dude, got a little grip on there. Where, Where are, are we? We're uh, Brush for Bucks. It looks like heaven out here, dude. Casey's setting up the camp chef. He's nice gonna cook some dinner. We we have a EDC knife. Uh, Casey's lacking in that department, you know? Why well, did I carry that? Did you show him the ram? Come look, guys. <laughs> guys, come check out. If you've had questions about the 35 inch Nitto Ridge Grapplers, they're they're bad to the bone. Big I got, fan. I got a, a nail in mine. You did? Yeah, it's still in there. In the sidewall or out. like in it? In it. Oh, well, no reef on that. I haven't pulled it out yet. I feel like we're in heaven, dude. Like turkey heaven almost rolling in here. Look at this. God, look at that can am with the sunset. We got the J&M. Dude, this is freaking way sick, dude. Way sick, huh? This is the first time I've seen it with the headache rack. Yep. The roof rack. This thing's bad to the bone. You got her dialed. I like it. Some arrow stickers. You, you really didn't see a signs? sign down there? No, dude. I was full-fledged sticks, jamming, okay. and just roasting my tires. We got to go make sure the sign's still up. <laughs> uh, guys, what's up? Welcome to the vlog. We're coming at you live from the, uh, the Can-Am case. Okay, coming in hot on the Can-Am. Got Logie Bear, Maddie. So today's a special day. Uh, we are kicking off the very first Brush for Bucks project. So if you're part of the VIP text group or maybe you saw us on social media, you may have been aware of it, but we sold 50 exclusive tickets to this event. Uh, and all of it's gonna be donating back to Brush for Bucks to hopefully sustain this for years to come. But we're putting 10,000 sagebrush seedlings in the ground today. And 1,500 uh, bitter, brush. bitter brush plants. So we got a lot of work to do. Got the work gloves on. Got the Can-Am going. Bam. And shout out to shout out to Ty Stubblefield. Oh yeah, wow. yeah. Nice and I forgot Vice about Ranch that. Jerky. Stuff's Dude, delicious. I gotta get some of that. Anyways, guys, so that's what we're doing today. Uh, we'll show you some snippets, and then we'll have like a full-on video 
of this entire event and how you guys can help uh, help us out with it. So let's go. Let's go plant some brush. Party on, Wayne. Party on, Garth. Can you, let's see what the audio levels even look like. Just redlining. Yeah, we are experiencing some things. <laughs> hey guys, we're out here. We're out here doing planting. Do mouthing like you're talking. Hey guys, Matt here. We're out doing. Planting. Anyways, guys, we're up here. Casey and Brian. We're over there planting sagebrush. Logan and I are up here planting. Shots. We're rolling. So this is a uh, Wyoming sage seedling I just planted. And in two or three years, big old 200 inch box is gonna come in, eat the top of it off. I'm gonna be right there on the road watching him, watch him drop his antlers and pick him up. <laughs> what do you know about it? Dibble. That's number uh, 1097 of the county. I'm done. Nice. Come over here. Careful. Watch your feet. We're in Bitter Brush Alley here. I'm, is Casey still planting sage? Check this out. This is a windy situation. This little guy is what is known as Bitter Brush. Poor representation of the species. Yeah. We'll show them that one after this. That's a good one. This one's kind of weak. What I like to do with the weak ones, because he doesn't have a ton of root system, I just buddy him up. It's a buddy system now. Tag team. They're going to watch each other. So pretty much the same thing as planting sage. I just like to get real close and intimate. You know, just clear some of the sticks off. If I see some deer pellets, I'll put them down there for uh, future fertilization. High get, nitrogen. Get the hole nice and ready. Oh, that guy's really struggling. And then just give him some support along the side walls, you know. And these little guys are going to grow up to be what Brandon calls deer candy. So pretty much me and Matt have our shed zone in four to five years from now. It's pretty close to the road. So you'll know where to find us. And just like that, that little guy. I like to build him a little reservoir, kind of. Get it flat. Good luck, buddy. Go get him. That's been Bitter Brush with your boy Logan. See you on the next one. And we're back. And we're back. <laughs> Guys, welcome back to the vlog. We, uh, we're in the jumping jack. We just had a very successful day today, guys. We kicked butt. Everybody kicks butt. Everybody that came out, over 11,000, what was our final number? 11,600 plants planted in an old burn. So we're all feeling really high, really good. We got podcast gear set up and we're about to do it. Why are you giggling? <laughs> <laughs> we're all just happy. <laughs> I came out wrong. <laughs> we're all on a high note. That's what I should have said. Jeez. I don't know what these guys are up to. <laughs> Anyways, we, uh, we're so appreciative of all the support for everybody who showed up at our very first ever Brush for Bucks event. Uh, we felt for the first time doing it, it went exceptionally well. We gave away about $14,000 worth of gear and prizes. We had people from as far away as Cheyenne, Wyoming, McMinnville, Oregon, uh, the Washington. Seattle, Washington area proper, and then also Elko, Nevada, amongst folks from Idaho and some folks from Utah. So a really exceptional turnout. This is something we're going to continue to do. Hopefully next year we can do maybe two events in a couple different locations. It's a work in progress, so we're working at the kinks, but we're in the jumping jack. We're about ready to film and record a podcast. Maybe just record yeah. a podcast. No, we're not to the film level yet. We're not filming it. Logan says we're not filming no. it. We're going to hit a point one day where we have a 360 cam in the middle, and then in the edit, we just pan. We're not I there like quite it. yet, but tune into our podcast. It's on every major podcasting platform. We, we have done a poor job of continuing podcasts on a frequent basis. Uh, a lot of that is just because, like, once the fall season starts, we kind of lose... We lose the ability to do that stuff, but uh, we have a lot of things to talk about. We want to do a hunt series podcast where we just talk really about like hunting stories, everything from like the fire bowl back in the long time ago, like a real in-depth dive into a lot of these different hunts that you guys have probably watched before. We each have like some favorites that are true to our hearts that uh, would be really great stories to share. 
And then uh, we got some other cool guests that we've never had on too that we'd love to make happen. So going to try to make a point this spring and this summer to do more of the podcast. But Logan and Matt are setting us up with the podcast equipment right now. Just looking for my backpack with a memory card. We got all the goodies right here on the Yeti. And so we're about to do this. Casey's out rummaging around outside. And then we're going to get this thing started. That's the beauty of our podcast, you guys. If you haven't tuned in before, we're on Spotify, Apple, Podbean, Google Podcasts. We do it in the field. Like, we're not in some studio. We're, we got the equipment. We're in the field. And that's how a lot of our podcasts are. So if you haven't yet, tune in. What's up, B? What's up, vlog? What's happening? What in the world are Halo. you doing? Halo. I'm just dressed up, doing things. Just dressed up. Just dressed up in my outfit, doing things. What do you think we're doing? Hmm. Take a guess. We're shooting a little video for uh, our good buddies over at Can Am. Uh, we did the conservation project yesterday, so we figured we'd knock two birds out with one stone and uh, film this today. So here we are. Do I look like a paid actor? We're doing things, guys. This is not really our uh, program. Three different angles, boom poles, key grips. I think Matt's gonna have headphones on. But we're, we got the boys wrangled up and we're gonna make them read some scripts for one of our, one of, one of the companies we really like that sponsor us, Can-Am. That's what we're doing. Very unconventional, historically. We, uh, we don't read anything. And I think that's the best way to make content, uh, at least that suits our style. When we've got like scripts to look at and try to read off of. We've historically not been very great at it. Lots of different <laughs> takes, trying to make it sound natural, but it's just a little project for some hunting accessories uh, that you can put on your Can-Ams. So we're going to be covering that and uh, also talking about our first ride, which I believe was uh, when we took Daniel on his elk hunt in Nevada. It was the first time we'd ever jumped in a Can-Am side-by-side. -side. Yeah. First time Daniel had ever been in one, or driven one for that matter. What so, format are you shooting Anyways, a little unorthodox, X. but yeah. something we're trying to get completed for the day. Earlier in my little portion of the vlog, I was uh, just wanted to say thanks to everyone who showed up for Brush for Bucks and then obviously the whole Hush team for putting it together and uh, being there in person, putting boots on the ground and helping improve winter range habitat. Super cool and like I said, wish I was there. That just leads me to the conversation is, I just want to remind you guys, maybe some of the newer followers who are here um, what Hush is all about. So we built this company off three pillars and one is conservation like the Brush for Bucks. Two is bring awareness to hunting to help acquire new hunters and anglers and then three is to give back to local community and the hunting community in general and uh, when I really look at Hush man I'm very proud for what we've accomplished and what we stand for over the years. All the cool things we've been a part of and able to either shed light on a cool story, um, raise money, through events and donate money or just give back so I just want to say thanks to all you guys because literally we're not able to do it at least at this level without you guys so thank you for the support um, and that being said let's uh, let's shoot the bow I haven't got my new one set up this year so I'm gonna shoot last year's bow and see if we can hit something still three shot groups just right around 20 yards or so and see if we can hit the dang Just curious how many of you guys are uh, shooting your bow often and getting ready for the bow hunt. It surprises me every year just how quickly August comes. And before you know it, it goes from shed season, a little bit of a summer break, and then uh, it's bow hunting season. But that's my three shot group. I was aiming for the dot, but at uh, that closer range, I do shoot a little high. So I think I'm gonna set up the uh, Delta McKenzie deer target and uh, see how we do with that. Gonna be aiming low and uh, trying to put it right in the 12 ring or at least the kill shot. And this is what I have to do when I tree stand hunt, having a 30 yard pin on top, is I always have to aim a little low for anything less than 30. Oh 
Oh yeah. <laughs> Smoking them guys. Feels good. Get a few reps in. Bam. Pretty dang good group. Again, considering I was shooting high, I was aiming almost right at this crease. Which if you remember the dot, I was shooting about four or five inches high. And I will take every single one of those. Well, that's it for my portion of the vlog. Heck, this might be the end of the video if it is. Thanks for watching. Make sure you subscribe. You know, all the flannels and the hush gear available at gethushing.com. And make sure you come back for tomorrow's video. Shed tour is going live, and I'm super excited to share it with you guys. So thanks for watching this video. And uh, if it's not the end, I guess go enjoy hanging out with the other guys. See ya.